I remember Mrs. Ford was a stickler on handwriting. In my handwriting is not good today, but I type it, so I get away with it. Uh, but there was one day that I got my name on the board and a check mark. And that meant that I had to stay after school for five minutes. And that wasn't a big deal if you were in, in town, but I rode the bus, so my mom had to come pick me up. And so, um, since I missed the bus, uh, my mom came and picked me up, and she came and picked me up, and she, we lived three miles from town. And a half mile from our house, she stopped and she said, if I come and pick you up again after school, you can check out you get a walk for us to go home. I never got another check out. <laughs> but my, my parents held me accountable, my teachers held me accountable, uh, my coaches held me accountable. Uh, Kurt Kinnaman was my high school basketball coach my junior and senior year. Uh, my last game, we got beat by Inman, the last of two times. Uh, I had a horrible game. Um, I came into this, I ended the season averaging over 20 points a game, uh, double digits and rebounds. Um, back in the day, I could play. Um, that's changed now, I'm now old, get it. Um, but he called me out at halftime and said, you're not our point guard, stop trying to handle the ball. Pass it to the point guard. That's what I needed to hear. Did I like hearing that? No. Was it true? Absolutely, it was true. I was not the point guard. I needed to be underneath the basket and scoring an easy, um, easy shots and getting rebounds. So we all have a role in um, what that play, what how that looks like. Um, other people have a role. Obviously, Mrs. Unruh. Um, I laugh about her. The fact that she would choose me. Um, I was a fifth grader who threw up on her desk. <laughs> and um, I had thrown up in the morning, and I was so committed to school, and maybe it's because I didn't want to stay home, my dad would put me to work, so it was better to go to school. Um, and now I think back, how, what has that instilled in me? Um, I've been a therapist in my current place of employment for 14 years. I've never called him sick. Um, this morning I'm a manager, I had an employee call in sick, and it just frustrates me. You, you know who calls them sick? The same people. It's not, I have four, I have therapists that I've worked with for years, they never call them sick. I have other therapists, they call them sick all the time. Um, so what did that, as a fifth grader, I learned, um, you yeah, probably shouldn't throw up and then go to school and then throw up on your teacher's desk, but if you're really not sick, you need to be at work. Um, 80% of success is showing up. Um, and that's not just showing up in the classroom, it's showing up in the weight room during the summer, it's showing up um, for tutoring sessions, it's showing up for, um, to be a part of your team, to be a part of, uh, if it's an athletic event, if it's band, if it's theater, um, if you're not showing up, putting in the grind um, day in, day out, uh, that's where success is driven from. So, um, I do want to encourage you. I mean, show up at school. Your teachers want to invest in you. Um, the community wants to wrap around you and support you. Um, I think you guys see that on Friday nights. Um, it's as important you see that on graduation day. Um, and now I see it today. I mean, to come back this many years later and have high school teachers, elementary school teachers, middle school teachers um, who invested in me years ago, um, still want me to do the best. Camp uh, Gal is a special place. Um, it's different than when I was here, I get it. This building, we didn't have this beautiful facility. Um, but at the same time, we were proud of what we had. And, um, we packed the gym, that was fun. Um, so we all need cheerleaders. And secondly, we can all meet cheerleaders. Um, how easy is it to say, Good morning to someone walking in the hallway. How easy is it to smile at somebody? Um, I think about the hospital where I work at, I don't meet anyone on their best days. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can't do encouragement to them, that I can't smile at them, that I can't greet them. Um, and just be personal. Did I turn, did I turn off? Uh, <laughs> I guess they shut me off. I'm done. <laughs> is this is this loud enough? Can you hear me? If I just talk without it.
So we all need cheerleaders, and it's easy to do. Like I said, smile at somebody, say hi, greet them by name. Um, preferably greet them by their right name. Um, that's always embarrassing um, if you call them the wrong name. Um, and I, at my first job, one of my, um, my bosses told me, always be nice to the custodians. They will make you day great. And um, I kind of looked at her like, what are you talking about? Um, the custodians and the cooks, you've got to be friends with the cooks as well. Because it's amazing, I think about how many free meals I got here. Um, <laughs> they fed me breakfast. I wasn't on a breakfast plan, they, would, they loved me. Um, but that's because I was nice back to them. And I'd get them ice in the morning. How simple is that for, um, for an extra cinnamon roll on cinnamon roll day? Absolutely, that was, that was um, gold. So um, regardless of what someone's financial status is, treat them how you want them to be treated. Um, and that's the beauty of the hospital. I don't know if you're a millionaire or homeless. You all get to wear the same gown when you're in our facility. And so I have to treat you all um, like I would want to be treated myself as well as um, regardless of what your um, financial status was. So don't change who you are based off of who's around you. Um, be consistent. It's the easiest way to live. Um, that way you don't have to remember, oh, when I'm with this group, I act this way. When I'm with this group, no, it's be consistent. Be who you are. Know who you are. Um, don't base that um, based off of your immediate success, what you've just accomplished. Um, but you're the same person. I was the same person after basketball season was over. Um, I was the same person after I, my senior year. I qualified for state. Um, I ran the 300 hurdles in track, and I fell on the on the track. I had two hurdles left, and I fell, and I was done um, being a young athlete. And um, I was the same individual if I would have won that event, or I fell in prelims. Um, but I had to be true to myself. So we all need cheerleaders, we can all be cheerleaders. Um, some of these points tie together. Um, the second one, small disciplines repeated with consistently consistency every day lead to great achievements gained slowly over time. Um, that's John Maxwell, I'll read it again. Small disciplines repeated with consistency every day lead to great achievements gained slowly over time. Um, I didn't get to be where I am today from a career standpoint, from a um, financial standpoint, from a life standpoint, um, by just showing up. I, through the years, I put in the grind to accomplish where I am. And, um, People use the term easy come, easy go. I mean, you look at people that have way more money financially than any of us will ever see, uh, and they just blow through it because it came so easy. How many lottery winners, you know, and three years later are in worse situation than whether they were before? Am I hot? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so you think about that. Um, consistency through your life is how you gain great achievements. Um, and I have people along the way you cheer me with it. I think, I, did I just go off? Um, it's fine. Okay. Um, so I left here. As a senior, I um, graduated. I um, made the decision I'd go to Friends in the university. I got a basketball scholarship. Um, but I got, got more money for academics than I did for basketball. It's the way of the world. I mean, even today, if you've got a good GPA, a decent ACT, you can get more money than you'll ever get athletically. So, um, I'm thankful for my teachers in high school. I had crazy, I had great teachers, crazy teachers, great teachers. Um, they pushed us. Um, Mrs. Boats is here, she was business, she was my typing. I, I, I joke that I'm a better typist today because of email than I was necessarily from her class. Um, which is okay. no, uh, which is true, but um, she sets a groundwork for that. Um, Mrs. Renfro was my science teacher. I 
I love chemistry, I love biology, I love anatomy. Um, and so my senior year of high school, going into um, Christmas break, I was having about 30 points a game. New Year's Day, I rolled my ankle, got hurt. Um, it's crazy, that was 27 years ago and I remember it like it was today. Uh, things stand out. And the next day, on so January 2nd, my parents got me an appointment at a clinic in Wichita, and I showed up there to Fairloo, and I walk in, and I don't see a suit or a tie in the place. Everyone's walking around in um, wind pants, the equivalent of sweats and t-shirts, and I thought, when I grow up, this is what I want to do. Um, I want to be a physical therapist. Um, so that dream was set because of an injury. Um, so you never know what's going to lead to um, where your career is. Some of my um, hardest times um, have brought out the best fulfillment. Um, the times that I've really had to buckle down and work is what I remember versus things that have come easily. And so uh, as a senior in high school, I thought, okay, I'm going to be a physical therapist. Now what? Um, so, as a freshman, I had Kim 1, I had Calc 1. How I passed that test, or passed that class, was um, literally I had a personal tutor every day. And I had great math in high school, but Calc did not make sense to me. Um, so calculus, I buckled down, and it was the consistency that I put in every day that helped me pass that test. I knew that I needed Calc, and I knew, knew I needed a good grade in calculus in order to get into PT school. At that point, PT school was as uh, competitive as what the one med school was to come to vet. Um, for a while, then it decreased a little bit, but it's back, it's super competitive, and I knew how do I make myself stand out. So we had to, I had to consistently put in the grind. Um, and I think about, you know, for you, what does consistently putting in the grind look like? It's the summer workouts. No one sees them. People only see Friday night. Um, but summer workouts at 6 a.m. is where the work is done. That's how you get better. Um, it's coming into school early or staying late, right, um, having your teachers invest in you and on, from a personal standpoint, uh, helping you understand the subject. Um, high school is more about learning how to learn. I shouldn't say high school. It's middle school. Elementary school, it's learning how to, learning how to uh, apply things and uh, to, to not necessarily, like what I use on a daily basis isn't cal, thankfully, uh, but I had to take calculus in order to get into PT school. So knowing that route from an early basis is huge. Uh, so grind away, um, it's a grind. Uh, but you don't get to where I am today without friends. So, um, next quote that I love, I love this. I don't even remember where I found it. Um, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men, weak men create hard times. Um, G. Michael Hoff, it's a quote from him. And, um, it goes along with, we are all intrinsically lazy. Um, given the easiest path, most, most people are gonna choose the easiest path versus the hardest one. Um, and how do you train yourself when times are good and when times are bad to still put in the work? Um, I, I hate a degree when I was in school. Um, I wasn't very good at it. I was slow. I didn't comprehend what I read. Um, now that I'm older, I, I enjoy reading some. I don't read a lot. What I read is about leadership. Um, I don't read about physical therapy. Um, I read about leadership and um, the examples of, um, and that's where I think I got this. Was, it's true, hard times create strong men. If things are easy, you just, create, you just walk through life, it's not a big deal. Uh, but when things get hard, we're all capable of buckling down and uh, doing way more than what we're capable, we think we can do. If we can train our mind, um, our body 
weeks with Paul. And uh, that's, that's hard to do. I, mean, I didn't think as a 12 year old, I didn't have a clue what that meant. As a 17 year old, uh, I have a 17 year old at home, he's a senior in high school. He thinks he works hard. Um, his life's been pretty easy. I purposely try to make it harder for him. Uh, that sounds mean as a dad. Uh, but I have. I, uh, I didn't give him a car. I made him buy it. Um, he came to me and asked for money as a 12 year old. And I told him he didn't need money. He needed a job. Um, but that long term, I believe it's going to impact him way more than if I would have given him uh, $200 to go do with whatever he wants. So it's amazing. He, um, he's not perfect. Um, he has a little bit of my intensity in him. Um, he's a soccer player. He got a yellow card the last game because he slammed the ball down. I was so mad at him. Uh, he was mad at himself. So, and those are the conversations we have. He, um, I told him about the Pico. He's a captain, you can't do that. Um, when you're a leader, you need to be held to a higher account of and it may not be fair, but it is what it is. So we all want to be leaders. We all want to have the captain banner. We all want to have the captain sticker. Uh, but with that comes accountability and comes a higher level of um, you have to be. You have to be. You can't just be the captain in name. So uh, with that, strong leaders. Uh, what do you see about strong leaders? They don't blame other people. They expect to accept the responsibility. Um, even when it's not their fault. Uh, we lost games. I, at the time, was probably to blame the refs at times. I may even blame my coaches at times. I had great coaches. Uh, my son has not always had great coaches. That's been a learning experience. But I don't blame the coaches. Um, I don't blame the refs. Um, I question them. <laughs> um, but I don't blame them. Um, oops, I think I shut back off. But um, how do you ex how do you ex accept responsibility? And that starts early too. I mean, you can do that regardless of where you are. Um, obviously, in my career, I've had to accept responsibility. Things happen um, when you're doing surgery. Um, patients, the outcomes don't always come out the way that we expect them to, or we'd hope them to. Um, thankfully, it doesn't happen often, but there are medical complications. And how do I? as a therapist, explain that to the patient and how do I walk alongside them? Do I blame the surgeon? No, no. Um, you don't blame the surgeon. Even if it's their fault, they are the ones that need to accept that responsibility. I will never throw a surgeon under the bus. Um, we have great surgeons. There are some surgeons I wouldn't recommend you go to, but you'll never know who they are. I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, and so, you know, with that, it's um, leaders accept responsibility for their actions, but also the actions of their team. And um, ultimately, I can't blame someone else if we have issues going on at work. It's my responsibility. I'm the manager. Um, the buck stops there. Um, and I've been dis I've had that displayed to me from from the management team that I work for. So um, I'm thankful for that. Um, Nick's guiding principle. This has been with me, goodness, since Mrs. Ford with the Good News Club. Um, obviously from Canton Galva. Um, I love this. Um, it's a verse. Um, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Um, it comes... We are all capable of doing so much more um, than what our, if we get our minds in the right spot. And when I think about wellness, obviously I'm in healthcare. Um, wellness, there's a physical piece to it, how active I am, how much I exercise, how much I sleep, um, what I choose to eat, um, how I choose to live my life. Um, I've never wished that I smoked. Um, I never wished that I got drunk. Um, I never wished that I um, 
was promiscuous, whatever you want to say. I, I, I never look back and think, man, I should have had sex with no more girls. Um, that would have made my life better. I've never thought that. Um, I've never thought I should have gotten drunk. Um, I've never thought, man, I wish I would have experimented with drugs. Um, so many things in my life would have changed based off of those decisions. And um, obviously, I was my parents instilled that at an early age. Um, I also had a spiritual upbringing from Good News Club. I was actively involved in a church and a youth group. Those were my best friends, um, looking back. Um, but the decisions you make today um, will impact what your future looks like. And that's from an academic standpoint, it's from an athletic standpoint, but it's from a lifestyle standpoint. Um, and so we are capable of doing so much more. And, um, I, you know, I was talking about wellness. Obviously, there's a physical piece. There's a financial piece. Um, we talk about this at work. Um, you've got to prepare for yourself financially. Our, my place of employment offers a match on our 401k. Um, it's not a bunch, but why would I not contribute to my 401k and take advantage of that? That's free money I'm walking away from if I don't. Um, so physical, financial. There's a, I firmly believe there's a spiritual component to our overall wellness. Um, and that can look different for each of us, um, but be true to yourself on that and explore that piece of it. Um, spirituality is a key um, to that. Um, mental, man, if COVID didn't teach us anything, we should know there's, a, our mental wellness is not good in America. Um, and I'm old school, I know. Um, I'm old, I, you know, for all the students here, I'm old. Um, but relationships, we have to have relationships. And relationships can't just be through um, technology. I said it, I mean, that's crazy. They didn't pay me, they probably cringe when I say it. Who knows? Um, but how do you have a face-to-face -face, um, relationship with someone? Well, that's key um, to our mental health. Um, gratitude, I mean, is key to our mental health. Um, surrounding yourself with other individuals, some who think like you, but others who don't think like you and challenge you. Um, and when you're in a situation where you're not comfortable um, or someone's different than you, don't look at them and judge them. Look at them and ask questions and listen. Um, I work with individuals who are not like me. Um, I grew up in a very, I'll say, white school. Um, very few minorities. Um, we were middle class, I think. Uh, I would say middle class. We were never poor, like I didn't know where, what we were gonna eat. Um, but by all means, I didn't have designer clothes. Um, and, um, but with that, like, um, w I had great relationships and people invested in me. And I think back, how do, how do you, how does, what does that look like for you? Um, so um, there's a spiritual component to that, explore. And then um, the last little quote is, the will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not protect you. And um, Bernadette Devlin said that. Um, my life has taken some weird turns. Um, probably um, the most humbling experience I've ever had is my wife and I and our two boys, they were 10 and six at the time. We sat across the table from a young lady. So. Who asked us to be the parents of the daughters that were in her tummy. And no 20-year-old should ever have to ask that or think about that, but it happens. And we couldn't have been more blessed. Adoption is a weird thing. Um, 
It has taught me more than all my education. Uh, it's humbled me. Uh, it's taught me that you can love people who aren't in blood relation. My daughters are biracial. You would never know it. It's taught me that it doesn't matter what color you are, uh, what background you come from. Uh, I love those little girls. And I love my boys. Uh, but it, it's opened my eyes to things that I wish I didn't know existed at times. It's also opened my eyes to a world that's really hard. And um, we've been very blessed. Uh, obviously, you know, I always say adoption, everyone comfort, everyone sacrifices. Uh, the birth parents sacrificed. Uh, I don't build the birth parents up to be, you know, put them on a pedestal like they're perfect because at some point our girls might want to meet them. But at the same time, I don't throw them in the bus either. Um, they were young. Um, things happen. And we're so thankful that the parent, the birth mom, chose us. Um, there are so many options that she could have had. And um, we are thankful for that. So, um, but that's changed my life. Um, and hopefully, at some point, my girls will say, we changed their lives. Um, obviously, my son's a conqueror for sacrifice. Um, my middle son went from me the baby, and now he's got two little sisters. Um, we traveled, we went to soccer games, they were carriers. Um, my wife and I were sacrificed um, financially, but then also sleep wise. I mean, we were sleep deprived um, almost seven years ago. So they're in first grade. So I've got a senior, a son that's a senior, a son that's an eighth grader, and then two first grade daughters. Um, well, I mean, who does that, right? Uh, but we've been so blessed, and, um, and that leads me to my last point of how do we finish well? How do we leave a legacy? Um, when I was 18, I didn't think, okay, when I'm 45, I'm going to come back and speak at Kate Gala High School. Um, really, it wasn't even on my radar until about three weeks ago when this is under a text me and said, I have a question, what do you think about, what do you think? Um, and who knows, this might not be at all what she thought <laughs> when she texted me. Um, but I think about how I've been shaped, and now it's my responsibility. How do I start giving back? How do I invest in those people around me? How do I encourage the staff here? Um, when you look at I've mentioned multiple teachers that had a huge impact in my life as a second grader. Four, I have a fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Decker. Um, obviously, Sue and Kelly were huge in my world um, from an athletic standpoint, but also from an academic standpoint. Uh, Mrs. Votes, Mrs. Renfro, Mrs. Hamilton, um, Coach Kinnaman, Lyle Silvey was a coach of mine. Um, all these coaches who invested. And then I look at my college, my college coach. I mean, my parents, I, I think they thought it was crazy that I put up with him. Um, but I learned so much off the court, more off the court than I did on the court. And then, um, and then I think about my boss, the discussions I have with my boss today. I mean, it's, when we talk about finance, if we talk about I mean, leadership, we talk about um, leaving a legacy, being bigger than just yourself, and how do you encourage those around you? Um, and then I look about my family. Um, obviously, first, I've got to make sure I'm raising my own kids the right way. Um, how can I, you know, that's a, that's a huge responsibility we have as parents, and I don't want to screw it up because I don't want to try it over. Um, I've got a one-shot opportunity with each of my kids, so what does that look like? And so how do we finish well? Um, how do I make sure that I don't end my story 
after I fell after the last hurdle at the state track meet my senior year? How do I make sure that doesn't define me? Um, most of us will lose our last high school athletic event. Most of us, um, how would you joke, we usually, and from a career standpoint, get one step higher than we should and we fail. That's a problem. So how, am I, how, do, how can I be content um, at where I currently am and not always be pushing to that next level just to fail? Uh, how do I prepare myself so when I am ready to go to that next level, I don't fail? Uh, and that's you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, um, spiritually, financially. Um, so life is humbling. Uh, I'm humbled that I'm asked to come do this. I'm humbled that people who invest in my life show up to listen. Um, and then you guys are like, why is, why is this Randy dude coming and talking to this? So, um, no, regardless of where you come from, um, you can achieve great things. And achieving great things doesn't mean you're the next millionaire. I used to think the millionaire was crazy. Like, I don't, I've already made over a million dollars. I, now, I don't own a million dollars, but I, I mean, over your time, you're going to do that. Uh, but that doesn't define who I am either. Uh, I've been very blessed financially. I've been very blessed um, from a family standpoint. But the decisions I made early on started that path. The work ethic I developed early on um, has made it where I am today. I guess I want to leave you with that, I encourage you with that. Like, put in the grind, put in the effort, show up, show up early, uh, show up at least on time, but show up and show up ready to work. Um, I never say work hard, you either work or you're lazy. Uh, so show up and put the work in. And, uh, and at the same time, don't take it for granted where you come from. Uh, you're blessed, you've got educators who are invested in you. Uh, take advantage of this moment. You've got great facilities. My, my goodness. Uh, but that doesn't make you a good athlete or a good vocalist or a good I mean, thespian. What, whatever you're involved in, whatever your passion is, find a passion um, and invest your time and energy um, in that. And then encourage those around you. So, Never think you're better than someone else. Uh, and don't forget where you're coming from, but then set goals for where you want to go. Uh, and it, can look in, it will look entirely different for each of you. That doesn't mean one's right or wrong or one's better than the other. Um, but, um, and then finish well. I think that's it. That's probably enough. You guys done. So.